this guy. So the electronics are taken care of and I need to build a cabinet for it. I took the dimensions off of the old cabinet and I picked up a length of three quarter inch poplar. It's nice stuff. Uh, it's seven inches wide. The basic design of the box, the enclosure for the amp, because I'm not going to be covering this with cloth, I want to have a solid piece on the top as represented by this sketch. Overall, the outside dimension will be 14 and a half inches wide, 15 and 7 eighths tall. I, w I need to have the same inside dimensions so that the this uh, panel fits in there with the electronics. The idea is uh, the structure in here, this ramp sort of guides the sheet metal for the electronics panel up this ramp into this little nook. Because I'm going with uh, shorter side pieces and using both the top and the bottom panels to cap the side pieces. Anyway, things all make sense. If you have a scale drawing, doesn't matter if it's half scale, angles are still the same. 18 degrees is 18 degrees. I think I know what I'm doing now. So I can cut my side pieces, I can cut my top. I did a detail sketch of the sheet metal for the electronics and uh, it has a 16 degree angle. So the ramp in the box is at about three and a half degrees. That's this angle here. And that makes about 20 degrees. I chose to go ahead and go with the 18 degrees that is in the original. Try and keep it as original as possible so I don't outsmart myself. Uh, this is my reference edge. When this was ripped at the lumberyard, they ended up having a taper from about seven and a half inches here to just under seven inches at the opposite end. That's not going to be a problem, the just under seven part, because I'll use this part for the way that's narrow, I'll use it on the top where I'm going to be beveling that back anyway. Anyway, this isn't square, and these I'm cutting to 14 and 3 eighths long. Okay, so that cut right to the line. This is my reference edge, and I'm going to square up this surface and then cut to the length at the correct squareness. Now let's square up this surface. I got everything else cut to length the same way that I showed you with the first couple pieces. And the pieces that are at least very similar. flush when it feels right. It just feels right. Now there's nothing perfect about the way this is going, but there are some things that are going pretty well. So this uh, slat that holds the speaker soundboard 
is flush at both ends to the that's the right side piece and I'm clamping it in place I'm actually clamping it in place including the table it's not glued yet I have to leave this clamped up for about 24 hours. Um, I want to get these pieces put in. couple important things have come in. I got the speaker, the tank speaker I plan to use for this project. This is a Jensen Jet. Three quarter inch thick Baltic birch. If you're not familiar with Baltic birch plywood, it's very high quality virtually no voids uh, and what I need to do is make that soundboard that's going to fit in here. For the back panel I chose quarter inch thick material which is the same as the original design. I went ahead and picked up Baltic Birch for this as well. So one other component that I don't yet have I ordered grill cloth. Um, I chose a grill cloth that I think is going to be a nice balance aesthetically um, and produce and be good and be acoustically. Recapping a little bit, the reason I use a skill saw for a cut like this is because I don't have the table saw set up with an extended rail. I'm notching the corners because I made the support rails, the ramp rails, go all the way up to the soundboard braces. Let's do a quick test fit. I'll have my hands in here nice and safe and I've made my measurements very carefully so I'm ready to go to rip this to five inches wide. Performing a quick dry fit to make sure the speaker and everything else lines up, fits in. I'm glad I did it. Uh, I probably want to bias the speaker a little bit this way.